But if you face the saboteur and you say, you know what, this is just me again procrastinating because I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to force myself to go through that barrier. It is a barrier of, it's, it's like the most rewarding thing in the world when you take on your saboteur. It is, this, this is how self-esteem is actually nurtured within you. Hi, everybody. It's time for another uh, archetypal um, video. Uh, this is our third, I think. I can't remember. Um, the archetype I'm doing this week is the saboteur. And <clears throat> our first one was um, the victim. And I'm going to jump to the saboteur because this is an archetypal pattern that everybody has. And so I think there's some archetypes, obviously, that um, some people have and others don't. For example, you will not find the athlete anywhere near me. Not at all. Not, not in a million years. Um, so not all archetypal patterns are in every single person in the same way. But it's been my experience that the saboteur is universal. And here's the reason. And that's that power is the name of the game in the human experience. Every single thing we do, everything we think, everything, everything is a power negotiation. When you shop, you think, oh, is this going to disempower me or is it going to empower me? You may not use that word. You'll say, is this going to look good or not? I mean, but translated is, will this take power from me? Will it draw criticism to me? Every single thing we do. And it's so fascinating to me because the subject just on power alone is something I could go on and on about forever, which is our relationship to the journey of becoming empowered and how we sabotage that along the way. And, and, the, and the way that I truly observed this archetype um, in people was when I started as a medical intuitive. I, I got the things that I believed at that years ago. One of them was that everybody wanted to be well. And that <clears throat> when we become not well, ill, challenged, we, everybody, will automatically do everything to make themselves well. That no matter what it is, no matter how hard, no matter the effort, I could not have been more mistaken. I was shocked at how many people would say, when I talked to them, or, or, or my, my, my wonderful colleague, beloved friend Norm Sheely, would say, you have to do this, 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 and this, and you'll get your health back. Your health, not a pair of shoes, your health. And the response of so many people was, all that, I have to do that, I have to work that hard, work that hard. I mean, <clears throat> you're course correcting what is taking power from you, draining your health. You're finding the map to get your health back. And the response was, oh, wow, geez, you know, change my diet, give up this. Wow, ooh, ouch, unbelievable. I, I And then, I'll tell you, as I really became enthralled and enchanted and just endlessly intrigued with, the, with human consciousness, with the way we are, and the way our intuitive system works, and it does, it works <laughs> early on, early on in my career. Um, Norm Sheely and I taught classes on how to develop intuition, and if I ever do that again, any one of you is free to push me off a bridge. But in the early days, and this was in my 30s, so um, I, I wasn't as convinced about the nature of intuition as I am now. 
and the idea that it had to be developed and that there are practices and, and uh, it, uh, ugh. anyway, the long and the short of it is that what I realized was intuition, our intuitive system is a complex, wondrous, interior operating system that simply operates. You don't have to be a vegetarian or ohm and on, sit under trees and do all of this stuff. It simply operates. It's high functioning. And it is on 24-7. It tells you nonstop. It, it provides advice nonstop, counsel on, on, don't eat this, don't do this, don't do that. Because it's tied to the law of balance. It's tied to the laws of the universe. This is the way organic divinity works. This is God in your blood and bones and in your cell tissue and in, your, in our basic design. We are designed to survive and to thrive. And that design is this microscopic pulse that includes the way our intuitive system works. It says, you know, get that's enough of this, or you, stay away from this, don't do this. This system is so extraordinary that, you know, you don't even pay attention to the fact. But if, I, if you were in my class and I'd say, you know what, I want you to pay attention to how many inner instructions, no matter how small you may think, even down to that's too much salt, stop, you know, even that that you are always responding to little instructions like that. They just come in all the time, all the time, all the time. This is that organic divinity intuitive system that's always working on your behalf. So why would we sabotage that? Why, why, why would we do things to repress that system? Why? That, that became my question. I ended up writing the book, Why People Don't Heal. Um, ultimately, um, and today, I mean, I would write one three times as long considering because I didn't then. What I identified as woundology then, I would expand on tremendously, beginning with the what I believe is that the journey of life is only about us becoming comfortable with the creative force of our soul, the creative force of what we are, of how creative every word we say is, every thought we have, uh, the force of our power. And, and we start out with identifying and maneuvering that power in the physical world with stuff. You know, stuff is power to us. If I have, if I have, more stuff. If I have that kind of stuff, if I have this kind of stuff, I just want more stuff. Stuff makes me powerful. But eventually, you can have all the stuff in the world just loaded up. Look how many books I have. Just all this stuff. It, 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 it peaks out. And you go into that next level of power, which is the self, which is the self. And you start that journey. And we've named that journey the journey of self-esteem. And what, what I realized was that what makes a great intuitive is not, you know, like your diet or your <laughs> how many trees you sit under and meditate and all that stuff. It's self-esteem. It's the capacity to truly, truly regard, your, to hold yourself in esteem and to live by that, not tell people, you, you can't talk to me that way. That's not self-esteem. Self-esteem is realizing that your, you, your power is really power and that it means something when you give your word, that that's just not a bunch of verbiage coming out of your mouth. It's actually an energetic thread of commitment that says my consciousness is strong enough to actually make a commitment here and you can count on the whole of me. It's a power agreement. So what do people, why do we sabotage our, our 
empowerment journey. And I think it, my observation is that the saboteur, let me describe it, is not like a gargoyle that shows up at the foot of the bed, some external force that sabotages you. That's not what it is. The saboteur is a mechanism in us that activates every time we <clears throat> have a opportunity to empower ourselves or someone else or someone else every single time even in the tiniest conversation when someone may ask you a question question means there's multiple answers and you can give an answer that really reflects how you feel or what the truth is or you can think if I answer it truthfully, what will happen to me? So maybe I'll give them the answer that makes them happy. And you sabotage yourself. You sabotage what you're thinking. You betray yourself. Because you don't want to deal with the consequences of actually speaking something more truthful. People sabotage themselves in relationships all the time because... They don't have the esteem, the self-esteem, to fully be themselves. And so they begin to be a reflection of the other person, do whatever makes that person happy, do whatever that person, whatever will keep the relationship together. And behind the scenes, the self-loathing gets engaged. The resentment gets engaged. Passive aggressive behavior starts because you can't lie to yourself. You can, you, 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 not forever. It's not possible. So the saboteur is that part of us that engages when we know that we are in a situation, a circumstance, a relationship, a conversation, anything that represents an opportunity to speak to speak a larger truth, a greater truth, to be honest, to be, to use light instead of shadow, to use light instead of shadow. And, and why, why, why would we so fear that? Why? Well, if you, if you, well, from my experience is that the more empowered you become, other behaviors fall from the wayside to the wayside like the more empowered you become the less access you have to excuses for why you are not doing the best you can why you are not do fulfilling your dreams you you can't be a procrastinator once you deal with your saboteur, you, you, you start realizing this is, a, I'm sabotaging my opportunity here. I'm not doing something as well as I could do it. You become conscious of the fact that I am deliberately doing this to myself. And you cannot blame other people anymore. So one of the reasons we people cling to the saboteur in them is that it comes with a package of excuses and blame, uh, ways to blame life, blame other people, blame childhood, blame lunch, blame whatever for not fulfilling whatever it is you even knew, the slightest task that you were supposed to do today. But you sabotage that. You say, oh, I just don't feel good. I just... Just you give into excuses. But if you face the saboteur and you say, you know what, this is just me again procrastinating because I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to force myself to go through that barrier. It is a barrier of, it's, it's like the most rewarding thing in the world when you take on your saboteur. It is, this, this is how self-esteem is actually nurtured within you. It's not about, I'm just going to tell everybody, you know, they can't talk to me this way and they can't, they, this nonsense that that's self-esteem. Self-esteem is when you take on yourself and you take on the saboteur inside of you and you actually 
um, challenge your own patterns that you become aware are patterns you give into because you don't want to try that hard. You actually don't want to. You like to think about something, but actually doing it. Only you start doing it. When the saboteur comes up and presents you with lots of excuses, you had such a bad day, you deserve this, you deserve to relax. That's when you stop. And you say, this is it. This is the voice of the saboteur. Because if I succeed at this, then I'll, I'll be, I will expect myself to succeed again and to try harder the next time. It won't be that easy for me to let myself off the hook. If I become a stronger person, then people will might want to rely upon me in ways that I have relied upon them. They may start leaning on me, and I will not be seen as as vulner as as vulnerable as I have been in bef before, because vulnerability allows us to reach out for help in a way that. Becoming stronger does not, and people fear that. We don't, we don't get to complain as much if we take on our saboteur, so that when someone says, you know, why don't you try this? Why don't you do this? Instead of saying, that'll never work, I, that'll never work, you, which is sabotaging suggestions even before you think them through, even before you reflect upon them. As you develop this sense of self and this commitment you make to yourself to not allow the saboteur to get to you, you are able to truly access capacities in yourself that you didn't even know you had because you, you blocked it. You just sabotaged access to your own inner talents your own inner strengths, your own capacity to, to reach higher and higher potentials in yourself. The saboteur also is a part of us that because we struggle with our own empowerment, one of the things we also struggle with is empowering others because power, I'm telling you, is the fundamental ingredient in everything, in every conversation you have with people, in every there isn't anything. Every single thing, even shopping for groceries, is a negotiation for power. Everything. Is this good for me? Is this not? I mean, everything. Everything. How you speak to a person, what you allow yourself to perceive in the other person, to it. The grace of understanding. I love to talk about grace. I love it, love it, love it. And the grace of understanding is such a spectacular grace. Here's the difference. The word understanding is usually used like, do you understand me? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Do you understand? Do you understand me? Now here's grace. The grace of understanding works like this. When, you, when you're with somebody and you really finally get the truth that nothing is an accident. Nothing is not negotiated, managed somehow. I don't know how, but it is that you sit back and think, I wonder how I can empower this person in this moment, even briefly in this conversation. I wonder. I wonder. God, grant me the grace of understanding. Let me understand what it is I can, what, what gifts in me I have that I can contribute to this person's life. How can I empower them? That's how grace works. How can I use my gifts to empower this person? Instead of sabotaging a, a, a conversation, you have to assume that every relationship has this level at which we are either empowering each other or we're not. When someone's insulting you, when someone when you feel when you feel unsatisfied when you walk away from someone, you think Ah, something's wrong here. You can feel that you haven't been empowered by an encounter with someone. But if you go into this, even slight conversations with people at work, thinking even a smile 
is a way of empowering someone, even, even the kind tone of voice, that you are consciously, consciously shining your light upon them. And I think it is incredibly challenging for people to empower other people, that sabotaging other people is something we do all the time. Now, let's shift this to the collective and look at our society. Look at, not just ours, look at societies. And look at how they, the, how many rules, regulations, policies, politics are all about the balance of power and keeping power here and keeping these people disempowered, taking power away from women and putting it in the hands of the uh, men, particularly. So they, the more pregnant women, the more women are burdened by unwanted pregnancies, the more men have access to the workforce, to positions of power, to moving up the ladder. If they could just clear away educated women who, who, um, are in the pregnancy years. We keep power away from other groups of people by constantly emphasizing the qualities in those people that people think, you know, we don't, we don't want those people in this country. We don't want this. We don't want that. Because we, we don't want our power to go to them. So it takes a lot of effort to spin sabotage, saboteurial thinking that people latch on to. And you latch on to that when you feel like you don't have enough power. If you deal with your inner saboteur, you really clearly see, you really, really, really reach a cosmic perspective hopefully, where you get, this is a very short journey, this life, this business of life. It is very, very short. Nobody gets off this planet alive. And what matters is not the accumulation of power and stuff, but what it is we do with the power we have on behalf of the whole. What it is we do to make a difference to not sabotage the, the, life, the life of others or yourself, or yourself. <clears throat> so let me leave you with this. And that's that pay attention to the micro size of d dynamics of your life, tiny conversations, um, the way in which you think, I, I could, could I have used a more empowering word with this person? Could I have added a compliment? Did I consciously choose not to? From now on, think, I've just sabotaged that because I, I didn't want to compliment them. I didn't want to say, well done. I didn't want to say, you're looking really good. I don't want to say that because I don't want them to have more power than me. You have to hold yourself accountable for where you are and work from there, and work from there. And, and trust me, everybody is on this journey. There isn't a person you will meet who is not on this journey. The saboteur is a universal archetype that has so much authority because the business of empowerment is the business of life. It is the business of life. Okay, well, you know, as, as you can tell, squeezing one archetype into just 20, 25 minutes is, I mean, really, I could do, we could do a whole workshop on just dealing with our saboteur. That's how rich this is. But um, that's not realistic, at least not for now. But what is realistic is a little bit of truth goes a long way. So I hope you enjoyed this, and next week, I'm not sure what archetype I'm going to do. It's, I'll surprise you, but it'll be good. Thank you, everybody.